Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and welcome to the Farm and Home Show. Today, we're going to talk about all those fun insects. Well, not all of them, but some of them that are out there. And Dr. Rick Besson, University of Kentucky Extension Entomologist, is here to clear up the mystery of what are some of these flying insects that are out right now. Well, well, good morning, Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there, there's a lot, and we're getting a lot of reports from people right now, particularly those that are cruising above some of the lawns. Uh -huh. And there, there's one uh, that the last couple weeks, we've just been getting numerous reports of this one wasp. I want to call it the grub hunter, but it's, that's not its official name, but I, that's the name I've given it. Okay. It, it's a, uh, you can take a look at the wasp here. It's a black wasp with dark wings and an orange abdomen with a couple of yellow spots. And they're flying low and cruising over lawns. And what they're doing is they're searching for white grubs. And so are they boring into the yard? They actually will, will, will tunnel down into the lawn. They'll find a white grub and she will lay her egg on a white grub. And that egg hatches and it kills the, the white grub. Huh. And so they're actually providing a, a beneficial service, but the problem that we're having is many people see, you know, the, these, these wasps cruising over lawns, and they think, well, you know, I don't want my kids to go out there and play, I don't want my pets out on the lawn, and they're very concerned about them. Now, do they sting? The, the wasp has a stinger. It's used to paralyze the white grub, uh, but the, they're, they're not aggressive, and, and they're not trying to sting us, so short of you know, grabbing a hold of one or stepping on one with a bare foot, uh, you're not going to get stung by these wasps. So the, the, they don't have the aggressive tendencies of yellow jackets and hornets and some of those social insects that are trying to protect a big nest. Okay. So these are not aggressive. So do they usually travel in more than one, though? Is that what, what's causing some people some alarm? Or? They're, they're, they're solitary, mm. but where there are a lot of white grubs in the mm. lawn, you can get large aggregations of these. But they're, they're actually all independent of each other. There just happens to be a good food source for them. Right there. And so if we see these around our yard, it's a little cause for concern because they're not aggressive. You, no, they're not, they're not aggressive. Okay, well, let's switch gears and talk about maybe some of the ones that are a little bit more aggressive. And those are also very numerous this time of year as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yellow jackets, you know, they, they start off the season with a, a single uh, queen that makes a colony. But at this time of year, there can be hundreds of yellow jackets in a nest. Or e even with hornets, you could have hundreds in there in September and October. Now, uh, everything I said about being non-aggressive, all bets are off when it comes to yellow jackets and hornets. They, okay. they will aggressively defend their nest if, if they think their nest has been disturbed. And, you know, uh, if you do have them, I mean, I've seen situations where yellow jackets will even use an old mouse nest, you know, a tunnel in the ground, and they'll, they'll make underground nests. And people don't notice them for much of the season, but when they're mowing the lawn, this time of year, they, they run across it, and all of a sudden, the, the yellow jackets mm. uh, pour out of that. Yeah, so you just have to be careful. Well, you have to be careful, and in some situations, uh, you may have to knock out some of those nests. You know, if, you, if they're near a place where, where people are going by frequently, it's not a good place for that, that nest. And in those mm -hmm. situations, I would recommend you, you, you remove that nest. Uh, if it's an above ground nest, we have some of these, uh, you know, aerosol sprays that will shoot, you know, 20 or more feet and we can use those to knock out, you know, the, uh, some of the yellow jacket nests, the uh, paper wasps and, and other things like that, even the hornet's nest. With the yellow jackets and the hornets, you know, they make these paper like nests and the entrance is usually down at the bottom mm -hmm. of that nest. The best time to approach these would be at night because uh, yellow jackets hornets don't don't fly well at all at night so generally you, you, you put a flashlight pointing in one direction and then you approach the nest from a different direction if they do come out they fly to the light so you never want to be holding that flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be a very good situation yeah, yeah. now let's talk about one I get we get calls sometimes and we say there's this huge ginormous yellow and black insect that's flying around 
Well, one, one of the biggest ones we have is a wasp, and it's a cicada killer mm -hmm. wasp, and, it, and it's cruising over lawns. Some of them act aggressive, others are not aggressive. The ones that act aggressive are actually the male wasps. Okay. And males, wasps, bees, and ants do not have stingers. <laughs> the stinger is actually a modified egg layer. And so the ones that act aggressive, it's all a bluff. It's a bluff, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you do have these insects out, give us a call. We'll be happy to help identify them. Thanks, Rick, for being here with us, and thanks for watching. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.